Hello, my name is Peter Raymer, and today we're going to talk about chain of command in Microsoft Dynamics 365 for FNO. What is chain of command? Chain of command is the way that we can extend or customize Microsoft base code. Now, why do we need chain of command? Why is this something new in Dynamics 365? The reason is in previous versions of Dynamics 365, in Dynamics, we could just modify the base Microsoft code. We could overlay it, we could change it, we could do whatever we wanted to it. That was really nice. Unfortunately, that caused us a few hiccups um, down the road. When Microsoft would release a hotfix or some new features to the code base, uh, a developer would need to merge those changes in with any custom changes to the code. This could be time consuming and potentially costly and cause clients to not upgrade their code as often um, because of this, this time and this effort that it would take to merge in the code. Well, in D365, Microsoft re-architected this structure, and so now we get something where you actually cannot modify the base Microsoft code um, directly. Uh, the benefit of not being able to modify this code is Microsoft can uh, roll out new hotfixes or new features basically whenever they need to, and they can overlay their previous code without worrying about overwriting any customizations. This is really powerful, really useful in D365. Now the question is, how do we actually modify um, the code now in D365? And the way we can do that is either using event handlers or chain of command. Um, both of these are mechanisms, tools that we can use to ex essentially extend the base code and add our new code to run um, alongside in between that base Microsoft code. So let's take a look. All right, let's look at the screen here. Let's pretend that you have a uh, class and it's called Business Logic One. And inside of it, you have a method called do something. This method could take an argument such as an int, this is just an example, and return a tr string. So in this case, I'm taking that integer, I'm actually just converting it to a string and returning that value. Well, let's just pretend for a moment that this is base Microsoft code. We would not be able to make any changes directly to this code. This is where the power of chain of command comes in. We can actually come in and we can create a new class that extends this base class. So I'm gonna right click on classes, I'm gonna say add, new item, I'm gonna find my class object, and then here, this is where it may be somewhat important to have a good naming convention. I'm gonna call this business logic one underscore, and then we need to call this extension. It's very important, and one of the rules that we have this underscore extension. One other thing that I found to be really useful um, is because you can actually name code, uh, a form or a table or a class, all the same object. And if you wanna extend that object, it gets a little confusing. So I found it's actually really helpful if you put the type of object, class or table or form in the middle here. This is totally optional. Um, this last part is required though. So I'm gonna click add and we're gonna create a new class. Here's our new class. Um, now what I wanna do um, is I need to take the exact same method definition from my base class in order for this to work. So I'm gonna come over here, gonna put in just the stubs of our base method here. Now we've got a new class, we've called it underscore extension, um, and we've named our method the same. But this by itself, won't use chain of command. The, the key here to use chain of command is actually a few different pieces here. We need to use this attribute, and an attribute starts with a square bracket right here, and I can even put the end bracket in right now. And then I'm gonna use this keyword extension of parentheses, and then I need to give it a name. Um, and the best kind of best practice way of giving it a name is to use a function. So I'm gonna type in class 
string and then parentheses and then the name of my base class. So in this case, business logic one, close parentheses. I could have used just a straight string inside of here, but then um, if that string didn't exist, um, I wouldn't actually get a compile error. Um, whereas by using a function such as class string um, or in other cases form string, um, I will get a compile error if that class does not exist. So here we go. We've got this main piece that's needed and this tells our compiler that this class should extend this base class. The next thing we need is this class needs to be a final class. Um, this is just one of the requirements of um, chain of command. We need to name our class with the underscore extension, as I met, mentioned earlier. And then the last piece is we actually have to call the base method. And the way we do that is with a little bit of a strange syntax. Um, you would think maybe calling super or something like that. That's actually not the case in chain of command. We need to say next do something, which is the name of our method. We can pass in our parameter and then we could even um, re return that result to a variable if we want. So we must have this part of the call where we use the next keyword to call the base method. This is a really basic example here. Um, looks like I'm missing a close parenthesis here. We'll add that in. And then if I save, um, it should tell me that things are working as expected. And of course it's complaining that I'm not returning a string. So let's go ahead and do that. I say return ret semicolon. We'll save and we'll get rid of those red squigglies. Okay, so this is a really basic example of a chain of command method. Um, the power of this is we can now actually put code beforehand. Let's say we wanted to change the value going in. We could say arg equals arg plus five and always add five to our argument that goes beforehand. We also could change the, the output of this method. So I might say, I want to add the keyword um, today on the end of our string. That would be a little silly, um, but I can actually change the result. So Basically, I'm not allowed to change the core Microsoft method um, that's going to do a lot of the logic, but I can make changes to the inputs that go in and I can change the result set. I can add additional functionality. So if you think of maybe if you are using chain of command on a validate write of a table, you could add additional conditions that you're checking when you're writing a record. Um, maybe you've got a case statement that's looking through various values of a base enum. You could add an extra values on your base enum and then in using chain of command actually kind of check those additional values as well. Um, there's a whole lot of uses of chain of command. This is really the basics. So we'll kind of go into uh, fur further details and show you how to use these on other objects um, in a further uh, lesson. Um, but for now, you, you can take this as a very basic example. The use of chain of command is so that we can um, customize, extend base code. There's other parts of the extension model where we might extend a table and add fields or add controls to a form. Um, chain of command is really for customizing and extending code. Um, so thank you very much.